Simply Food by T.Y. Hey everyone, this is Simply Food by T.Y. I know it's been a while since I've been here, but I wanted to give you guys a quick tutorial on some of the seasonings that I use when I make my buttermilk fried chicken. So just a quick rundown of some of the ingredients. We have cayenne pepper, season all salt, slap your mama seasoning, onion powder, garlic powder, and then of course the buttermilk. So the chicken has already been washed, so we're just gonna go ahead and season these up really quick. This does not take long at all. I'm gonna say this is about one tablespoon of each of these seasonings. You can use less on the cayenne pepper if you don't like your spicy at all. I also add a little bit of hot sauce to this mixture, so you can go pretty light on the uh, cayenne pepper. This is the Slap Your Mama seasoning. Okay, we're also gonna use some onion powder as well. Right. And then of course, the garlic powder. For the hot sauce, you can omit that completely if you don't want to use it. And you can also use whatever type of hot sauce you like. And then for the buttermilk, before I do that, let me just mix this chicken in. For the buttermilk, you don't have to get too fussed about measuring that out because all you need to make sure you do is cover the chicken. So however much buttermilk that takes is how much you want to use, just to make sure that it's completely submerged. Okay. We're gonna add black pepper and a little bit of seasonal salt and paprika to the flour later on. So don't, don't worry about adding it to the chicken right now. This is our buttermilk. And like I said, you wanna make sure that the chicken is covered. So however much that is, that's about how much you wanna make sure you use. Okay, just gonna push that all the way down in there. You wanna let this soak, folks, for a minimum of an hour. You can let it soak for up to two to three hours if you would like. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add in the hot sauce. I'm gonna be using Crystal, um, uh, Crystal's hot sauce. I have Tabasco, but that might be a little bit too much and we're not trying to kill nobody. I'm gonna just do a few dashes of the hot sauce here. And now just give this another mix. And now we're gonna wrap this up. And like I said, you wanna place this inside of the fridge for a minimum of an hour up to three hours. Then when you're ready to fry this, you wanna make sure you drain off all of the excess buttermilk. Then you can put it into your flour dredge and then put it in your grease and it's just that simple. So I will show you guys the final results later on after this is finished marinating. Talk to you later, bye. Here's a quick close-up view of what the chicken looks like, guys, before we pop it into the uh, refrigerator. And like I said, you just wanna make sure you have enough buttermilk to completely submerge your chicken. So we're just gonna push those down to make sure they're fully covered so that it can soak up all of that goodness. Pop it in the fridge for, like I said, an hour minimum, three hours tops, and then we are ready to go. Alrighty, guys, welcome back, welcome back. Our chicken has been marinating for quite some time now. Um, so what I'm about to do now is go ahead and drain the excess buttermilk off, like I said. Then we're gonna go ahead and put it in our flour and then put it in the grease, it's just that simple. So for my flour, what I like to do, this is about, I say four to five cups of all-purpose flour. Um, I put two tablespoons of seasonal salt, a half a tablespoon of black pepper, and then a half a tablespoon of paprika, just so it can have that beautiful uh, coloring to it. Uh, so let's get going. So what I'm going to do now, like I said, is just go on ahead and drain off the excess buttermilk because you don't want too, too much on it. And then we're just going to put our flour right on the chicken. Make sure you get it nice and coated. Shake off the excess. When you put your chicken in the grease, especially if you are a first time fryer, you always want to lay the chicken away from you. Never do it towards you. That way, if you drop it, you won't splash yourself. So you just put it in. 
drop it in away from you, never towards you. Also, the key to making the perfect fried chicken, folks, make sure your grease is hot. Do not rush this process. It's better for the grease to be too hot and you turn it down than it to be not hot enough and now you got some soggy ass chicken. Don't nobody want that? Because ain't nobody got time for that. Also, don't overcrowd your pan. I'm probably only going to put, I say, maybe three or four pieces of chicken in this. Because these are some big chicken legs. You hear me? So I don't want my chicken to be overcrowded. I mean, I don't want this pan to be overcrowded. Because I want my chicken crispy. And because we are cooking in a cast iron pan, you know, you don't really have to flip the chicken around too, too much. But you do every now and then you want to just shift it, you know, from left to right. Just so that the breading isn't burning on the bottom. Because these pans do get pretty hot. So yeah, these are some pretty big chicken legs. So I'm only gonna do, actually I can probably fit one more small piece in there. So like I said again, make sure you drop off the excess buttermilk, cover it in your flour mixture. Some people like to do a double coating, you know, they'll take it from the buttermilk, put it in egg flour, and then do it again. Ain't nobody got time for that. And I also don't need that much flour um, on my chicken, to be honest. Um, there you go. That's the perfect amount. So let me give my hands a quick rinsing and I will zoom in a little bit so that you guys can see what's going on over there with that chicken. And then we'll get a close up view and I'll talk to you about some other stuff or future products. Don't trust nobody who don't wash their hands. You hear me? If they don't wash their chicken, don't eat from them. Ain't nobody got time to be getting salmonella. Don't nobody want no H1N1. You hear me? All right. So our hands are nice and clean. So again, this is a really, really easy process, you know, to make this buttermilk fried chicken. Uh, you know, you can do whatever type of seasonings you would like in yours. You know, if you're not a garlic person, take out the garlic. If you're not a spice person, take out the spice. It's pretty much, you know, put whatever seasonings you like on your chicken, cover it with the buttermilk, let it soak for about, you know, roughly, like I say, two to three hours, an hour minimum, just so it can really penetrate through the chicken. And then, and your flour mixture, again, it's all about your taste and what type of seasonings you would like. If you're a person that has high blood pressure, if you can't have salt, use salt-free seasoning, you know what I mean? So I'm going to bring this around so you can get a little bit of a better view there. I hope that's better for you guys. And now we're just letting that chicken fry off. Again, you want your chicken to be nice and crispy. So don't go flipping it around. Let it fry on one side fully. But you wanna just give it a little shift so that way it doesn't burn on the bottom of the pan. And again, the trick to making or having the perfect crispy piece of chicken, number one, make sure that your grease is the right temperature. Make sure it is nice and hot. I don't care if you had a friend tell you to splash water in it, that is foolish, you will get burnt. You hear me? Don't do that. A good way to see if your oil is ready, you can take the back of a wooden spoon, stick it directly into the pan, and if you see it sizzling around the wood, because most wood is always going to contain a little bit of moisture, it's going to hold moisture. If you see it sizzling around the bottom of the wooden spoon, that means your grease is ready. If you fancy and got money and have a thermometer, by all means do that as well. Step number two for your crispy chicken. You want to make sure that you do not overcrowd the pan. I know we're hungry. I know you're ready to eat. But this is the thing. If you overcrowd it, what you're doing is you're lowering the temperature of the oil, which means that chicken is now going to start steaming and not frying. Don't nobody want no KFC soggy chicken. Okay? Step number three is to make sure that you shake off some of that excess flour um, and the excess buttermilk. Because what can happen is, uh, you know, if you have too much flour on the chicken when you put in there, when you put it in there, 
it's just going to go all over the place. It's not going to stick to the chicken. And then your grease gets dirty. And that's a good way to tell, you know, if someone's, you know, been cooking in dirty grease because they've had too much excess flour on their chicken. And for me, honestly, I really don't even need flour on my fried chicken. I, just, I can just eat the skin. You know, if it's nicely seasoned, I don't have to have flour, but I'm doing this for you guys. Okay. So again, we let it go for a few minutes. So now we're just going to give it another little shift just to make sure, you know, it's not burning on the bottom. And this is a pretty decent size, you know, cast iron skillet here. Um, I did not fill it even, I mean, I filled it maybe somewhat halfway, but not too much because, you know, of course, as you add things to the pan, the level of the oil is going to rise and you don't want, you know, it to splash over and cause a house fire. So nobody got time for that. But what I can tell y'all is this chicken, baby, it smells some kind of good. All right, y'all, so I'm going to go ahead and sign out. And then once I flip this chicken over in a few minutes, I'll come back so you can see how it looks. I'll put a few pieces on the plate just so you can see the finished product. And then that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys in a bit. All right, y'all, we are back. Our chicken is now ready to be flipped over. So let's go ahead and flip this chicken over and let's see what we got going here, y'all. Let's see, let's see. E bobo, my God. Look at this, you know this don't make no sense. Jesus. Look at this chicken, do y'all see that? Y'all see how beautiful that is? That is buttermilk fried chicken, honey. Yes, Lord. That's gonna be something else. All right, y'all, so now I'm gonna go on ahead and just let this finish cooking for another, I'd say maybe three to four minutes. It honestly just depends on, you know, how thick your chicken legs are or whatever cut of chicken, you know, piece of chicken you are using. Um, for these, it'll probably take a total of, you know, six minutes total. Or mm, maybe six to seven to eight minutes total, let's say, because ain't nobody got time for raw chicken. Um, but yeah, so as you can see, our chicken is doing well. I'm going to finish cooking off the rest of this chicken, guys, and then I'm going to show y'all what the final product looks like. All righty, I'll see you soon. All right, guys, this chicken is looking beautiful. It is now time for us to take this chicken out. And there was one thing that I forgot to mention that I think is really important for me to say. When you are in the process of cleaning your chicken, make sure we take all hair off the chicken. Okay? Don't nobody want no lace front chicken. You hear me? Nobody wants that. I don't want Persian hair, Caucasian hair, chicken hair, rooster hair. I want no hair on my chicken, okay? No lace time chicken for me. All right, so our chicken is done. We're gonna take these bad boys out, and that's it, folks. Let me tell you something. This chicken is it. And I'll give you guys a close-up shot of how this chicken looks in one moment. Okay. All right, let me bring this over so y'all can see what I'm working with here. Look at that. Look at that. Look at how beautiful and crispy that chicken is. My God. I'm going to tell you something. This is the type of chicken right here that'll make you put a ring on it. Look at God. All right, y'all. All jokes aside, thank y'all so much for tuning in today. I'm going to go ahead and finish cooking off the rest of this chicken and getting things going. But make sure you guys subscribe, like, hit that notification bell so that you guys know when I upload a new video. I will be uploading uh, more recipes soon. I'll be doing mukbangs. I'll be doing reaction videos, a little bit of everything. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in to Simply Food by T.Y. And I will see y'all soon. Bye-bye. Uh,
Simply Food by T.Y.